da 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 I am going to play Kaichi. And to make it a little bit easier, um, let me go ahead and um, just um, kind of get 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 myself out of the out of the way. Kaichu, remember I played this game earlier. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 Valentine's Day. And what better to enjoy Valentine's Day um, than to uh, play, um, you know, a, a, a game involving romance? I'm gonna put this back up. Uh, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Um, I don't know. My, my, my camera seems to be squished, S -s spread apart. I don't know why it's doing that, but there it is. Uh, so yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> yeah, um, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be playing some games that are Valentine's themed. And this week, this stream, eh, it's just going to be a little taste. Just a fun little, little taste. Nothing, nothing. Nothing too dramatic, nothing too serious. What to say about this game? You guys have seen it before. It's so Kaiju, Kai, not Kaiju, but Kaiju is the Japanese word for monster movie. Uh, and it's very, very specifically Japanese monsters. Uh, the rubber suited uh, lizard monsters, like, you know, the dinosaur style monsters. Uh, from the 30s, 40s, 50s. And actually, you know, it, it, they kept going. Um, not to be confused with, you know, the Japanese superhero, you know, it, with, you know, suits and helmets and whatnot. But this is this is different. This is this is monsters. And what we're going to be playing is we're going to be playing this game um, where, uh, yeah, uh, we play a monster. Ramanamaro was my world and the news that we, is that we broke up. And so this newscaster is sad, and the other newscaster is just lucky is sad, and the other is just, uh, is just trying to make it. Brevity and lucky. Huh. Also, a colossal cruiser mm -hmm. appeared in the North Pole. Are you bringing up a Daikaiju to deflect from mercy or break up? Yeah, but the Daikana Kaiju knows Gikaiju is also a significant oh. story. You may be the lead here, hey. Papa, like, like Ram Ramona Mar. Ramona Mar uh, uh, buried my heart. Let's go to the satellite footage. footage. Okay. Mm. Um. Yeah, it's sad that you know there's no. Audio, but you know I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Um. I wonder if I can. No. All right. Well, moving uh by a keyboard. Oh. It's healthy to cry, Lucky. More on the story as it develops. <laughs> That's hilarious. So we're gonna go to. I don't want to romance them anymore. I am instead going to roll. So I, uh, my character is um, female. Their their pronouns are she her. Oh. A fantastic floating fungus has burst forth from the Amazon forest. Uh, we have declassified military report classifying the mushroom maiden. The mushroom maiden, I love it. Mushroom maiden. As a mega ricus. Oh. oh. Why do I have audio now? I suddenly have audio. That's uh, that's so weird. Giga Chu and the Titan Titanic Toadstool <laughs> Titanic Toadstool are now traipsing across the tropics. Are they really? Uh I, I have to keep moving. Um so let's go to New York. Let's visit New York. New York New York is a very romantic place. Oh. Mega Rickers and Gikachu share a strange engagement at the Statue of Liberty. Hmm. 
What was driven? What has driven the kaiju to bully our beloved Statue of Liberty? There's a language of love and a leveling of landmarks. Lucky, any strike can communicate compatibility. Um, what you talking about, brevity? Are you suggesting kaiju are wooed by wanton destruction? Yes. Indeed, uh, Mechorikus is waiting for Gigachu's reply right now. I'll try to uh, narrate the date as we go live at the scene. So, so there is some uh, uh, game audio coming through. That's hilarious. Uh, does Gigachu come here often? Oh, of course. So they oh, uh, so to express. Uh, compatibility, they have to destroy a landmark. This is Megaraku's first day on the planet. What? Mm. How is Gigachu feeling? I'm a little awkward. I'm shy. Oh, but they're both a little shy. Uh, they take solace in this shared awkwardness. Mm. There you go. Is this Gigachu's first time dating a fungus? Yes. And so, and so, you know, there's, there's, um, first time, first time love for everything. Megarikus is also excited for first contact between species. Okay. All right. Mm. Megarikus wants to know what first attracted Gigachu to them. Telekinesis. Nice hat. Force fields. I don't know anything about force fields. Telekinesis. So her strength? Or her hat? I saw her hat and I thought, her fungus hat. I don't know. Yeah. Ah. While I'm used, Megarikus encourages Gigachu to look beyond. Okay, that's fair. Does Gikachu like the Statue of Liberty? Yeah! Oh, there you go. Yay! Let's destroy it completely! And it is all gone. The Statue of Liberty is like a ley line for love and devastation. This is so great. This is so great. Deal breaker question. Does Gikachu kiss on the first date? Um, it depends on how the other person is feeling. If I'm getting the vibe that the other person would accept it. Huh. Maybe. They both agree. Hey, Aww. consent. Consent is important. They are still establishing boundaries. There you go. There you go, I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. But it can blow a kiss, there you go. That's nice, that's lovely. A colony comes according. What does that mean? Cosmic Pixie Dream Colony. Um, where are they going to go? Oh, they have to go to the North Pole Nuke Center. I don't know what that means. What is it? World breaking news. Aww. I wouldn't have predicted a trip to be so underwhelming. What? Yeah. You wouldn't be expected to be compatible in every area. That's important on a, on a date. That's very important. See, I've been on at least a dozen dates that were more destructive than what we witnessed. <laughs> Some things aren't acquired taste. They need time to get to know each other. Mm. Fair enough. I guess we're still getting in a good giga shoe ourselves. Oh. Um, oh, this is, I love it. So this is, you know, one of the things that is a, you know, a trait of the Godzilla movies is the conversation, where did Godzilla come from? In what is the meaning of where he comes from? Uh, the original Godzilla really was a metaphor for the nuclear bomb. Really, and then in later in later 
versions of the movies, the Godzilla movies, um, it became a lot more technical. So it's all, it's all related to radiation, nuclear power, nuclear energy, and all of the you know the controversial uh, issues around all of that, as well as nuclear war and all that all that stuff. Anyway, so so here's Gigachu's origin. Some experts are speculating that Gigachu is the manifestation of humanity's loss of connection as we digitize our lives. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Lucky? Huh. Those experts sound like philistines who don't understand quality memes. Oh. Well, it looks like Gigachu is trying to connect right now at Nook Center. I don't know what Nook Center is. Mm -hmm. um, what is Gigachu's opinion on precipitation? Well, that's important to a fungus, so of course it's great. Ah. Um, Gigachu is impressed with Mega Megaricus Cusses 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 cloud seeding spores. Could mm. Gigachu be someone who didn't share her political beliefs? Eh, it depends. Though a colonial organism, Megaricus cares little for colonialism. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is Gikachu complicated? No. Gikachu is just about love. Just wants love. Gikachu might not be able to comprehend Megaricus. Mm. Is Gikachu multilingual? Yes. Definitely. Gets around in the world. Can talk. Megaricus is curious about communicating in even more ways. Ooh. Ooh. La la la. Uh, which does Gikachu, pr Gikachu prefer for a partner? Younger, older, same age? Well, I, I feel like a fungus is long lasting. But Gigachu is a dinosaur. So older. As a timeless spacefarer, hmm? Megaricus doesn't really have a frame of reference for their age. Mm -hmm. Deal breaker question Does Gigachu kicks on a second date? Yes. La la. She does. She does too. And the kiss. <gasps> I first date. So let's go to one more. Colony comes according. Let's go. Um, Is this supposed to be London? Russia? Burj Khalifa? Ibstats Grass 2 Power Station? Oh, that's so random. That is so random. That's so weird. I don't I don't I don't understand. Brevity, do you know the number one question in our viewers' minds? Mm -hmm. Does Gikachu poop? <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Does Gikachu poop? Uh, let's find out. No. no, that's number two. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Uh, um, in, in, is it American culture? Uh, if you want to be polite, like children would say this. To go to the bathroom if you need to say why you need to go to the bathroom uh number two means to poop okay the question that is intriguing our audience is how are you so in tune with the intentions of the kaiju is it your degree in communications yeah. and brevity says i practice ishin denshin do what is that some strange monster dialect do you speak kaiju uh -uh. no it's listening to the heart Hmm. 
What makes Megaricus tick? Oh. They are neurodiverse, as am I, and seek something beyond the physical, as do I. Oh. Will Megaricus be alienated by incompatible answers? It says my, my stream hiccuped. Am I a recorder? No, I'm still recording. Okay, good. Uh, a culture shock should be expected. Duh, since they come from different worlds. Oh. They have plenty of time to figure it out if their idiosyncrasies can be synchronized. Big words here. Idiosyncrasy, synchronized. Oh. Let's see your insight in action and learn more about Ekebats Blinkerquest 2 Power Station now. That's such a weird, random thing. Like, why? Mm. Why? Uh, is Gigachu educated? Somewhat. Uh, Gekichu spent a semester abroad studying arch architecture. That's nice. Mm. Does Gekichu follow current events? Yeah. And, but they both do. Uh, but this power plant is, is, is taking a real beating. Uh, they both know enough to know they don't know enough. Mm -hmm. Which height does Gigachu prefer in a partner? Shorter, taller, same height? And maybe height is not important. Maybe it's not important. Um, not important. Megaricus is the tallest toadstool on the planet. Interesting. I love it that this um, uh, that this uh, ancient dinosaur monster is attracted to a mushroom girl. Mm. Um, does Gigachu dream? Yes, yes, dreams, romantic dreams, and and the and the mushroom girl. It's great. Megaricus is curious about Gigachu's dreams. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Mm. Deal breaker. Uh, does Gigachu have a sense of humor? Yeah, of course. Jokester. She's a, she's a jokester. Their love is elevated by laughter, and uh, as it should be. And they kiss again. Um, and you know what I'm going to do? I am going to save. Yeah. Uh, and I'll try to pick something. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll be enough. Uh, yeah, actually, what I need to do now is I need to, uh, fire up the next game. Okay, so let's start. Let's get into the game. It's called I Love You, Colonel Sanders. Um... There you go. Uh, let's load again. I'm gonna enter in my name. All right, so we're gonna play this for a little bit, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, oh, there's no, oh, I gotta read this, okay, hold on. I guess maybe there is no desktop audio, okay. Uh, you slept softly as the morning said castle warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever, or you could wake up now, 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 your first day, first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock, get to get to school. Lying in bed, you start the ceiling. Think about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School. Academy for Learning. <laughs> um, <laughs> University of Cooking, University School Academy Learning. I love it. Uh, your mind begins to wander. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Who will be there? What will it cook? What should you do rare? Time begins to fly by and you find magic get away from you. You need to take this seriously. 
I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist, teeth brush, hair comb, pits, deodorize, nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, shut out the door, and head off to class. Just we you need to get your blood flowing. A biscuit. This is a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken game. I love you, Colonel Sanders. Uh, is a game based on KFC, which is a fried chicken place. Super famous in America, super famous in the UK, and super famous in Japan. <laughs> of all places. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon a magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. He comes in a lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorable, awkward, adorably, adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Um, so we're getting some audio, game audio in here. This is, this is fine. That's okay. Oh, this is hilarious. Uh, Mary, good morning, Jack. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Oh my gosh. Actually, I'm, because I sure am excited. I'm nervous. Okay, okay, a lot of nervous. What the, it's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Remember, this is a, this is a romance game. It's a dating sim. Classic Miriam, raised by a master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard ever since we were little babies. Playing together. And you rescued me from that quicksand box. <laughs> the quicksand. Not a sandbox, but quicksand. It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. But the University of Cooking School Academy of, of Le for Learning's famous three-day only semesters. <laughs> I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Pep talk. Remember last month when you saw the fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Mm -hmm. The day later with Master gave me nightmares, I've been trying to forget. Uh, I know she looks spooky, but she's so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. <laughs> I've been waiting so I meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. You feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything, everything will be okay. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands. <gasps> it's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but she can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants. She knows it. Hello, Ash Lay. What oh, I see you there, chicken shins. You look Jack shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Oh, I can't stand Ashley. Everyone name is annoying. Oh, it's Ashley. Okay. Uh, if anyone knows what the perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your weird insults get us. Across the squad, you Ash's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. Uh, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, the rocking glutes. Ahem, Van Van, the man man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you rang, rang. <laughs> this is so lame. You've never been sure what the arrangement is. But as long as you've known them, Ashley and the Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam. But substantially more devious. So are they friends or are they something more or like what's 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 going on? I can't believe a university school academy for learning would even ever allow people like you to attend the students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas our diplomas now. <laughs> yeah. First day of school, okay, just give us our diploma. It's so weird. That's so weird. <laughs> or may hire us as professors. Yeah, my just could learn a lot from us. There's no time to properly tell, so you resist your, resist your urge. Let's go. Um, as you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Uh, uh, uh. 
Oopsie. I think it's broken. Um, you reach forward and easily pull the door open. That should do the trick. I love you. His name is Pop. Well, who's this kid? I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Um, so this is um, a visual novel, but there are game mechanics in this game. I'm just kind of walking you through just to have a little fun. And, and is this a good game for learning English? Yes, it is. Uh, like like many visual novels, it's it's there's a, there's a lot of vocabulary that can be useful. Uh, but like I said, it's it's about love, romance. Could someone like this also be a student? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag there says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> I love it. Um, his name is probably Bob. But because he's reading it upside down, he thinks his name is Pop. Hi, Pop. I'm Jack. I can make me hold the door open up all day. Nope. They're my watch in the building ahead of you. Is it kind of cute? I think it's just you. <sighs> First day jitters. Where to sit? That's the question. Where to sit in the first day of class? Uh, in a lot of my school, we had what was it was called assigned seating. And because of my deaf issues, um, I was assigned a little to the right of the class or the very, very front. I was that nerd. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium in the front of class. A pooch. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Sprinkles. The corgi can't talk. And this is the teacher. Oh my gosh. This is adorable. This is adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. This is an unreasonably cute puppy wise here in our culinary class. It must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. <laughs> Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little puppy, but I still demand respect. Woof. A cute dog, the best girl ever. Out of nowhere. The wind begins to brush around as a, as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom, just like on my screen. My background swirling blossoms. Uh, there are swirling blossoms in the classroom. Ah, I are, I are so romantic. Aren't I? Aren't I so, aren't I are so romantic? I are. <laughs> I'm chilly. Someone closed the window and then he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the door of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's, if it isn't my favorite student, Harland. What a southern name. Harland. Uh, it's a, it's a, a he was a common name for boys in the American South. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before I can finish the sentence. Please call me Colonel Colonel Sanders. And I love how they changed the name to, to reflect that it's more correct this way. Hush, Mamar. As Colonel Sanders walks down the lives, of, suddenly the room is sweltering. Oh my gosh. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty, sweats a lot. Maybe you should open the window back up before a faucet pits and melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on a second, nobody talks to my friend like that. You both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. Besides, when Jack sweats, it's not gross, it's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Yeah, okay. It's a good 
thing I didn't forget about the, the other this this morning in the classroom is hot, hot, hot. Oh my gosh. Colonel Sanders, a cute puppy. Uh, we're going to play for exactly three more minutes. Professor Dog steps in to settle class down and sets some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, legends, past, present, future, plus something, something. And while it's said and done here, there will be a battle. Oh, that's right. That's a game element. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. I'm sorry, guys. I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss quiet, Sprinkle says. Late to class is bad enough, but interrupt her mind monologue. I'll check out of here. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let there be a lesson to you. Tardiness is unacceptable. Tardiness, another word. Tardiness. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. Your turn. Sprinkle is referencing. Some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Ah, burr, 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 burr. The class bursts out into laughter. Ah, cool, uh, cute little robot. Oh, clanky rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands and selling it. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose and takes a deep whiff. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Um, smart but tough. You decide to try and butter him up and get him a tree from my pocket, but what kind? Chicken snack, of course. Reach beneath the apple and I return with the chicken snack in the hand. He goes, why does he snack off to his favorite? Uh, at my store where I work part-time, we have chicken uh, snacks, uh, like kind of like a chew toy kind of thing made of chicken. And apparently it's really popular. I think there might be some competition for the new star student. The furry professor, professor, the furry professor, it's hard to say that, a furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick, a coating of warm doggy jewel. Uh, take your seats uh, for the culinary creation. The two options remain. Hey, Jack, there's still a seat there. No one's claimed a seat next to me if you're interested, and I'm going to sit by my best friend. And I'm going to sit by my best friend, even though I want to sit next to the real cutie, the hottie Colonel Sanders. He's so hot. Uh, support me through class, because that's what friends do. Uh, Colonel, it's just so darn dreamy. I already talked about that. Pop quiz. Yay! <laughs> oh, Chris. Uh, so if you're ready for a life, so let's do the quiz and then I'm going to stop the stream. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. That's right. Forest is to tree. As chicken is to feather. That's right. And I'm going to purposely get the other one wrong. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? I'm going to say chopsticks. A comically oversized fork. Bridging a meat tenderizer. I don't know what that is. And a spork. Spork, greatest invention ever. But I'm going to say a meat tenderizer. That's a wrong what food is best for a broken heart? <gasps> Anything as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. A camel meat. Camel meat. Mm. A pancake that looks like a silly face. I'm going to go with the first one. That's right. And how do I do? Is Sprinkles a good boy? He is the, the best boy, of course. <laughs> That's the last question. I got it. Your total score is four out of five. Only one, not two yourself. Might do all right, kid. He nods Colonel Sanders. 
Uh, and I'm gonna leave. And that's how we're gonna end. That's where we're gonna end the stream <laughs> with Colonel Sanders. It's perfect. Um, thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for watching the stream. Uh, we opened up with a topic uh, talking about Billy Holiday. Your homework is to find some of our music. Uh, and then we finished by playing a couple of uh, very silly, very funny uh, uh, dating sim games. Next week, I will be streaming a more complicated story. Kind of an adventure, but also a little bit of a sad love story. But we'll, we'll find out more then. And we'll learn more about uh, America's African American and Black History Month. And, of course, romance. So, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to say thank you and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>